Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. First up today, Tesla's FSD beta has been spotted on two cars in Australia, a good sign for things to come. So if these reports from TeslaFi and TeslaScope are correct, there is now a Model 3 and a Model Y on software branch 2023.12.10, which we now know has the FSD beta on it. And TeslaScope is saying not just Australia, but it's also been spotted in Germany and Belgium as well. Now, of course, this is most likely just for testing purposes, and this guarantees nothing in terms of a general customer rollout. However, it's a step in the right direction and something to definitely keep an eye on. I'm sure most of you have seen this picture by now, but I just want to highlight a few things on this interior shot of the Cybertruck. First and by far the most important, let's not forget, we're still a few months at least away from actual production of this vehicle. So what we're seeing right now in this image may definitely still be more alpha, more prototype than the actual production variant. And no, that's not just hopium from me, but things like this wire hanging out right here and clearly the software being unfinished and unrefined are clear giveaways. Zooming in on whatever this thing actually is, it's not a wheel, it's not a yoke, it's something in between. But yes, it does have capacitive buttons, no stocks, unfortunately for many. One thing, it seems like the horn, unless it's this area right here, has been moved back to the center as many people have been requesting as I'm not seeing any horn signs on this image. And my honest question here is what is the benefit of going with this shape instead of just a regular wheel that most people are already accustomed to? There's no digital screen behind the wheel that we're trying to see, so I'm kind of at a loss on that one. Of course, the dash is massive as we were expecting. It'd be great if this could somehow lift up to have some storage under there so you could set certain things that were not projectiles in the event of an accident. And on visibility, I will withhold my judgment until I'm in the vehicle and not looking at a distorted image. Unfortunately, the range was set to percentage and not miles, so we can't learn much from that. And again, this user interface is not what we're going to see on the final version. It'll be much more refined. I'm hearing the software is not yet done for the Cybertruck. It looks like any hope for that sixth seat in the front is now gone as it's been replaced by this armrest and extra storage. I would imagine under this retractable cover is where there will be a place to set your cell phones, hopefully to charge. But honestly, I've always been skeptical of how they would handle safety with an airbag for that middle seat anyway, given the screen right there. Here are the cyber designed seat controls from a different vantage point. If you look closely at the seat, you'll see it looks somewhat perforated, so maybe we get cooled seats or at the very least ventilated seats. And again, down the line when Cybertruck production is up and running, maybe we get some options for things like the type of steering wheel or yoke that we want. Maybe there's an option for a sixth seat in the front instead of this center console, although I wouldn't hold my breath on that one strictly for safety reasons. And of course, comparing an alpha or a beta photo to Rivian's final product is not really a fair comparison, but we have to at least take a look at what the Cybertruck will be up against. And again, maybe the Cybertruck is much, much cheaper than the Rivian, but in the event that it's not, these are the comparisons that we're going to have to start making and consumers will be doing this cross shopping. So honestly, I wanted the main takeaway to be let's withhold our final judgment and criticism until we get a production version of the Cybertruck so we can start to compare the interior quality and refinement because at the end of the day, this just is not the final product for Tesla. Yes, Yes, we're getting closer, but it's not what will be coming off the production line. But let me know, what are you guys seeing? What are you guys thinking? I'm very, very curious. As of last year, Tesla had around 120 trainees and students in their apprenticeship program, and that alone made them the largest training company in Brandenburg. Now, RBB24 reporting that Tesla is looking to hire 180 new trainees and students, effectively more than doubling that number. A rep from an employment agency said Tesla shines as an employer and as a brand, especially in urban and migrant milieus in Berlin. 
And what I think is awesome, Tesla is offering these kids essentially share packages, including a savings plan in addition to their salary. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen the sponsor of this video, AG1, taking the Teslaverse by storm lately. Andy Sly, Farzad, solving the money problem, Dr. Know-it-all, etc. And you know what they say about great minds. And respectfully, of course, to those of you out there that say you don't need a supplement like AG1, honest question, have you ever gotten a blood panel done? I would venture to guess at least a few of you may have some deficiencies that you didn't even know existed. Those gaps can quickly be filled with AG1. 50 calories, six carbs, and less than one gram of sugar, yet you're getting all of this goodness in one daily scoop mixed with water. Their travel packs are great for those of you often on the go. Every serving has 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics to ensure you're getting a baseline of nutrition every day no matter how off track your diet gets. And on price, not just for AG1, but I would exercise caution at lower price points because that's where you can get into lower quality control and fake supplements. Not the case with AG1, it's certified independently by NSF, verified legit. So if you use my link down below, you can get five travel packs and a one year supply of vitamin D3 K2 for free with every new purchase. And yes, this would be a great way to support the channel. Thank you in advance. As I was editing, it looks like we got word Tesla is finally shipping hardware for on some Model Y builds. Earlier this year in March, Tesla started shipping Model S and X with the long awaited hardware and now the Model Y joins that list. Zach on Twitter spotted a performance and an all wheel drive Model Y with the new repeater cameras and the new camera cluster on the front. Additionally, there was some source code info from not a Tesla app showing a Model Y all wheel drive with Autopilot Hardware 4. I've been on record saying Hardware 4 would be an update I'd like to wait for if I had the option since an update like this only happens every few years or so. So it's great to see this news and we can expect this to roll out to more Model Ys in the weeks ahead as this is phased into production. This image of one of Tesla's fleet validation vehicles was spotted at a supercharger in the Netherlands. Their purpose is to gather road data for research, testing, and development in pursuit of advancements in vehicle safety and technology. These fleet validation vehicles are equipped with optical sensors, for example, cameras, radar, LIDAR, ultrasound, and together this makes up the sensors, which record images and video of the environment and send these files to Tesla servers for analysis and research. And specifically, Tesla analyzes the data to understand lane lines, traffic signals, the dimensions and movements of objects in the environment to develop and train detection sensors to be used in their advanced driver assistance systems in connection with their products and services. Here we have Nikola receiving a delisting notice for not meeting its minimum bid price requirements, to which I would say it's about time. I'm sure many of you have seen plenty of people out there now saying how Nvidia is such a better company than Tesla and anybody investing in Tesla made the wrong call and should have been invested in Nvidia. And look, in fairness, over the past one year, Tesla stock in the orange is down about 21%. And at the same time, Nvidia stock is up 138%. But almost 30% of Nvidia's rise is just from today. Sure, there's certainly some overlap between Nvidia and Tesla, but in my opinion, there are far more differences. So comparing these two companies in a head-to-head -head battle is just a fool's errand the way I see it. And I just want to get myself on the record as saying that Tesla will again have its time in the sun. I don't know if it's 2024 or 2027, but that next inflection point for Tesla stock is coming at some point. And simply put, with all the hype around AI right now, it's clear to see that Nvidia's time in the sun is here right now. For some context, depending on how the rest of this day goes, Nvidia has a chance to finish with the biggest one day gain in market value in history, surpassing Amazon's prior high of $191 billion in one day back in February 2022. And this right here would deserve its own video, but I just want to remind everybody with Nvidia's upcoming Hyperion 9 autonomous driving platform, it's not going into production until 2026. With that said though, it does sound very promising and it's cool from the standpoint of it being modular. So obviously Nvidia doesn't make cars, but companies like BMW or any other automaker using this platform, they can pick and choose what they want. 
the full Hyperion 9 suite, 14 cameras, 9 radars, 3 LiDARs, and 20 ultrasonics for automated autonomous driving, as well as 3 cameras and 1 radar for interior occupant sensing. I'll say it one last time, Tesla's time is coming. Jim Farley's been doing a lot of talking this week and his latest comment, he said, Ford's biggest competition in the EV space is not Tesla, it's not GM, it's the Chinese automakers. We see the Chinese as the main competitor, not GM or Toyota. So he didn't specifically mention Tesla, but he left them out. He also said, I like BYD, totally vertically integrated, aggressive, very, very impressive company, and they were always committed to electric. And here's one I kind of take some issue with. He said, BYD scale is way bigger than Tesla now, and they developed the LFP technology, which is a better battery. The first point, Farley was seemingly including hybrids in that figure, but really when he said LFP is a better battery, I wouldn't necessarily go that far, I just think it's different with different use cases. For example, LFP is not a better battery for a vehicle like a semi or a roadster or even a Cybertruck. But we have heard that Ford is planning to use LFP batteries in the F-150 Lightning, so we'll see what type of statistics they can generate with those batteries. Farley also said, I have no idea what's going on in this industry right now, talking about the announcements of 450, 500 plus mile of range vehicles. He said, these batteries are huge. If you have those kind of batteries, you will not make money. He said, we're not going to go 600 mile range. We're trying to make the smallest possible battery for competitive range. One last comment from Jim this week. He said, starting in January next year, Model E customers will have flexible purchase options online, in the store, with transparent pricing that they don't have to haggle over, and remote vehicle delivery, and later pick up as well. So tomorrow, Friday, is Ashley and I's five-year wedding anniversary, so I will not be uploading tomorrow. The next video from me will be Tuesday of next week. Hope you all have a wonderful, enjoyable, and safe Memorial Day weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.